More thoughts on the financial woes that caused the split between Gennady and now guys, Triple G Golovkin and Abel Sanchez. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing if you want to become part of the gang gang notification gang. Please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chats channel donations, the Venmo donations, and the Patreon family. Reworking. Now, I want to make this updated video. As you guys know, Triple G split from long time trainer abel sanchez i made a couple videos about it and i want to give some updated thoughts shout out to yahoo sports they were saying they did articles you see how gennady golovkin split with trainer abel sanchez could pose problems for the ex champ it says gennady golovkin made the four hour trek from his home in santa monica wednesday to big bear to the gym that abel had built specifically for him to collect his things and end their nine-year relationship with a shake of hands Unable to agree to financial terms, Golovkin announced Wednesday that he will no longer work with Sanchez and will hire a new trainer. The decision is so fresh that Triple G hasn't yet decided who will train him for his June 8th Steve Rolls fight. He'll be hard pressed to replace the success he had with Sanchez, whom he had hired April 2010 after relocating to the U.S. from Germany. They debuted, they debuted as a tandem. 2010 Golovkin knocked out Milton Nunes and they're getting some a couple of opinions from you know trainers and fighters and Tom Loeffler says and I quote they had a good relationship great relationship they had great success together as far as I'm concerned they are unbeaten together Tom Loeffler believes I still believe Golovkin won both Canelo fights right some people are saying Golovkin's brother Max and no Max is gonna train him and you know we got to see what goes on. It's an interesting move because Golovkin, you know, everyone thought that maybe he would end his career with Abel Sanchez. They had been together a decade, long standing pair. And sometimes fighters take a loss and they don't know how to, you know, they start blaming people or things like that. In this case, it looks like there's finances behind it. You know, it could be a lot of things, it could be multiple things were festering. And then the financial terms were, were the straw that broke the camel's back. But I started hearing little things. And Triple G, I, I mean, it's, it's hard telling because I don't know what, you know, exactly went on. But Abel Sanchez kind of, um, Golovkin's was more amicable when he announced it. You know, he was just saying, oh, thank him for his time. And it's a hard decision for me. Here's what he said. I would like to announce that I made a major decision for myself in my career. I want to build on what I've already achieved and continue to better myself. Therefore, I will not be training with Abel Sanchez. This was not an easy decision for me and it's not a reflection on Abel's professional abilities. He is a great trainer, a loyal trainer, and a Hall of Famer. I will be announcing my new trainer at a later date, but today I want to thank Abel for the lessons he taught me. And then Abel's statement was, FYI, as of today, I will no longer be working with Gennady Golovkin. After a nine-year relationship, record set and equal, developing a Hall of Fame career and making it possible to sign a six-fight, $100 million contract with the zone, he proposed and insisted on an insulting new trainer compensation schedule. My dignity and honor does not allow me to be screwed like that. It's unfortunate being greedy, being ungrateful, and no ethics honor integrity will end this relationship so he kind of went off i'm like oh shit um what i was hearing some people were were suggesting that abel sanchez was trying to get 10 percent, right and this might be true because in his formal letter he says making it possible to sign a six fight a hundred million dollar contract with the zone saying the work we put in together got him noticed, got the two Canelo fights, and then now he's getting a hundred million dollars. So the the rumors that I was hearing, based on statements like that, that could be true. Now, some people don't understand, but you know, the great thing about a hundred million dollars or one hundred is it's a nice round number for you. If Abel wants 10%, then that means he'd be getting $10 million. That's a lot for a trainer. 
you know what I'm saying, for one fighter. So um, the conversation shifts to, is that fair, you know? Because you have to understand, you when you get $100 million, it's over the course of a certain time. Plus, you have to pay mad taxes and, you know, have tax write-offs, different things like that. I don't want to get too too technical, but it's not like you just take the 100 million and just do whatever you want with it. You have taxes and different things. You have to pay sparring partners, you know, your wife needs things, house, mortgage, cars, stuff like that. So, um, that's a lot, $10 million for, for a trainer. And I have seen situations where a lot of trainers get eight, 10, eight to 10% or something, somewhere right around there. But then there's like a cap off. There's like a cap off max, you know what I'm saying? So if the fighter gets real big or starts getting lucrative deals like this, they don't exceed a certain amount. Like when I travel to these fights, I park, sometimes I go to SFO, sometimes I fly out of Sacramento and I fly out of Sacramento and I park my car there for, you know, for a week or whatever. And I park in the daily lot. The daily lot is like, let's say, a certain amount per hour or a maximum of $12 a day. You get what I'm saying? So if I'm there for all day, it's not going to be over 12. It's not going to be over $12. You get what I'm saying? So that kind of limits it as opposed to if you leave your car there overnight and you were paying $8, that'd be like 24 times eight. You know, that would be a ridiculous amount. So the daily limit or the daily lot, that's what they're charging. So I've seen th things like that with the 10% where, you know, if you're making a, a certain amount, a reasonable amount, 10% is about, I would say, average or, or, you know, the normal, the normal for boxer, trainer, or an actor, you know, agent, things like that. So Golovkin got a lot of money on his contract with DAZN. And you got to look at that. You got to move the, the decimal point over. If he's getting $100 million dollars, on his DAZN contract, then that means Abel would be getting 10 million of it. So he's calling Golovkin greedy, but maybe he, maybe Abel was greedy. I'm just, you know, I'm just spitballing this. I don't know exactly what's going on, but he says he proposed an insult and insisted on an insulting new trainer compensation schedule. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know the particulars, but if, if it is like he was getting 10% previously when Golovkin was making money on HBO and stuff like that, and then now that he's getting $100 million, you don't know. Maybe Abel Sanchez wants 10% of that, you know, and then that's $10 million. That's like what fighters are getting, you know, like Luis Ortiz to fight Anthony, jo you know, to fight Anthony Joshua. That's what he was asking for. You get what I'm saying? Canelo... When he fought Floyd Mayweather, his he obviously he made money from Mexico and on the back end for the pay-per-view because it was real successful. But when Canelo faced Floyd Mayweather, he only got five million dollars, five or six million dollars guaranteed to him. So that could have been part of the financial woe if Abel wants ten percent, because it would be ten percent of this hundred million dollars, and he seems to note this. So it's just something that's swirling around. And something I was thinking about. And like I said, depending on how you look at it, you know, Abel might be like, yo, he's ungrateful. I got you to this point and he has no ethics or integrity. We're supposed to be a team. I need 10 million. And Golovkin like, hell no. Nah. <laughs> you know, the other thing is you got to understand, like, if this is the case, Golovkin was already a storied and accomplished um, amateur. So it's not like he was Virgil Hunter and Andre Ward. Like, you know, like like Abel Sanchez, it says in this interview, he got him in like 2010. Golovkin was already a grown man by then. He's like 37 now. So, you know, he was born in probably early 80s or something. So, you know, it's just messy. It's messy right now what's going on. But I was thinking about that, and that's what's kind of swirling around. So I wanted to... See what you guys thought. 10% of 100 mil. And that's what's happening. These athletes are getting these big, big old sports contracts. And, you know, 
people see that in their eyes they get wide-eyed too like damn just only threw you a, a big bag we don't have to do pay-per-view we in this and then Golovkin might have said like hey no guys you know we're not doing the 10% anymore because you know I just lost my last fight and I mean you're teaching me some stuff but you're not you know it's not like 10 million dollars worth of teaching me so I don't know. I don't know if that's what it is, but it was just something to think about. And a lot of people are are kind of alluding to this is what it is. So I don't know. Maybe Golovkin is being cheap and it's something more than meets the eye. Because the way Abel Sanchez, when I read it the first time, he made it sound like he was being offered less than what he's what he was always getting. So I'm, the way I interpret it was like damn he's getting offered like Golovkin's trying to shortchange him he's being chintzy he's being cheap and frugal so I'm like oh shit but then the more I started thinking about it I'm like maybe he instead of getting that big percentage he tried to cap him out and say like yeah okay we were doing the 10% before but we talked we, I just signed this lucrative deal you're not getting 10% of that you know cause that would be again 10 million dollars that, that changes things exponentially. So, you know, some people will make an argument like Abel. It just it kind of depends on the training and the value and what he's learning and stuff. You know, putting a price on it. Abel feels he's worth more. But the thing that's crazy is he just lost Joe Joyce. And now he lost Golovkin. So I don't know because he's saying my dignity and honor doesn't allow me to be screwed like that. And he insisted on an insulting new trainer compensation schedule. So I don't know if he's angry, if this is true, if he's just angry off the 10% or I don't know. I, I guess we have to wait and see if Abel reveals a little bit more. But if it, it sounds like you could get, you know, you, you probably would have got cool money. Like we're arguing over six figures over seven. Like I can't imagine that. Golovkin would, you know, play him like that and try to give him less than when he was making $100 million, like significantly less. So after further review and thinking about it, Abel saying less might be because the pot is greater. You know, there's $100 million now and I want 10% of that. So yeah, he'd be, it would be a switch and it would be less if he was giving you 10% and then now he's no longer giving you 10%. So I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Drop your thoughts. I just want to make this video kind of spitball it and talk about it because this was kind of out of left field that they split. I knew and I noticed, I thought it was kind of weird that Abel wasn't at the Steve Rose press conference, only Tom Loeffler and Golovkin. But, you know, people get sick and, you know, maybe he didn't want to travel to New York. So I didn't really think too, too much of it. I just noticed he wasn't there. Drop your thoughts in the comment section. Let me know what you think of the split. Who should Golovkin go to? Do you think Abel wanted too much or do you think Golovkin is being too cheap? You know, Abel said he's being triple greedy, you know, ch -ch -ch greed. Drop your thoughts in the comment section. Make sure you smash the like button. As always, hate, comment and subscribe. Till next video is Ego signing off. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.